What is up guys? We are working on the Dana 70 today. As you can see, it is a really dirty job and it's not an easy one because we're doing a bunch of custom work to it. Hopefully this works. Oh. Yes, the garage is thrash. You can see I'm tearing apart the Dana 60 front over there. We've got the Dana 70 over here and probably took about two months. Um, Carl Jantz up at Jantz Engineering decided to take a job for me. You probably saw it in the last Dana 70 video. And the problem was I bought a Dana 70 3HD, which is the worst rear axle you can buy pretty much um, as far as one tons go. And I have one. And the problem is the offset on the pinion and ring gear is unique to just that axle. So if you want to go lower than the stock gearing in there, you have to do something custom or get a different axle. Well, I like to make things hard on myself, so I decided, why don't I go custom? Jantz Engineering, uh, he does a lot of weird differential stuff. He puts the wrong diff and uh, axles to make them stronger, he uses a Dana 70 ring gear and a Dana 60, a bunch of cool stuff like that. So I knew he'd be the one to talk to you about it. He decided to take the job and he machined me a Dana 70 ring gear spacer and welded a new collar on the carrier. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, here's a look at the 70 carrier. We got it back and you can see that aluminum spacer in there got machined out. The thing that I really needed help with was this. Um, he machined down a lot of this Detroit locker and put a collar on it. You could kind of see he just welded around and that makes it so when the spacer is on there and then the ring gear is on there, they're still centered on the differential and not just using the case bolt. So got all that, got this baby torqued down. Corbin just pulled it up and we're getting ready to set some gears. So yeah, it took a couple months to get this thing back. I still don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna throw it in the Dana 70 and we're gonna see. I have a feeling it's still gonna need a lot of shims even though it has like almost 3 16th of a uh, spacer in it it's probably going to need a little bit more and another issue is the ring gear is probably going to touch the housing because it's pushed over a little bit more we'll see Right, update on the housing. So normally this housing comes down right here and it's almost like a 90 degree right there. So we just cut all that off up to the threads. Bottom looks the same. And then after it dropped in, it almost cleared. There's just one spot right there that we had to clearance the ring gear on. So we're getting ready to clean this out again. Drop the carrier in there, see if it'll spin. Here's a look at the differential all installed. The ring gear is super close up there. It's kind of hard to tell because of the shadow um, down here. Here, you can kind of see some of the remnants of the scrapes putting it in here it's a really tight fit and then once you get it seated it gets all the room and uh, we finally have it set it took us about four tries maybe five to get the uh, shim spacing on the carrier right so yeah even with the spacer we had to put a ton of shims on this side and a really small one over here to get the whole thing moved over a little bit more to make it work so we got the backlash set then we started messing with the pinion and uh, it probably was like three tries tries of that and got it and and it's set everything's looking really good um i didn't want to mess with this axle at all until i got the carrier in there and i knew the gears are going to work and they do we've got a good pattern out of it so we're moving forward next we need to cut off the shock mount the pad and the spring perch on each side which is what i've been waiting for so the last piece will be the diff cover getting paint on it right now fancy shiny silver metallic paint for the diffs so dana 70 and dana 60 are actually the same diff cover which makes it easy got some barnes high steer arms these are for the dana 60 so that's gonna be on the front here's a look at that paint so this is the rust-oleum universal metallic paint and primer in one which is kind of cool so you don't have to prime anything you use uh, this stuff dries to touch in 30 minutes uh, handle in an hour and then full cure in 24 hours so it's not bad um, it is a little bit shinier like in this video i can see it looks like a mirror it's not like that in real life. You can see um, the one on the back of the Jeep there is it gets more doled out and of course I get 
crash into and all that but uh yeah i'm a rust-oleum guy i like all the rust-oleum products my go-to's are um, this for metallic stuff and then self-etching primer i really like and then the rust-oleum semi-gloss black that's like my most used one uh steal it yeah i'd love to try some steal it it's just the price is keeping me from doing it and i like how cheap these are you can get them everywhere i always touch up my paint real quick every time i get some scrapes on the trail so that's why i use our stolen it should have taken a before video of this but i mean you can see how much materials between that bolt hole and the edge there was even more over here before and very tight fit uh, we ended up getting a flap wheel and smoothing it down like perfectly but like i said putting this ring gear in it it, it actually touches the size and you have to kind of push it through there which is very weird this whole setup is very strange with this ring gear spacer in there and uh, carl gave me the exact bolts i needed so those fit perfectly feel really good about it we got the good pattern i mean now it's we're down to the problem i have with the rest of this build can the samurai even roll this much weight and we'll find out. Well, you can see how much grinding it was to get everything off just by all the shavings on the floor. Yeah, we can't even bring the samurai into the garage until I get this all done. What a mess. But uh, anyways, yeah, it was really tough to get all this stuff off. I got a couple gouges I'm gonna fill in there. And then you'll see the uh, brake caliper brackets are cut off. These weren't designed to fit onto this axle, but I thought it was close enough to just weld it up to this raised ring, but it isn't. Pads are really close on one side, so we're gonna use the other caliper bracket that came with them. This one right here, I'm not sure if this one's from Lug Nut or Rough Stuff, but what I'm gonna do is just gonna assemble everything and torque it down the right way. I'm gonna grab this bracket and bolt it to the caliper and see where it lines up and that's where we're gonna weld it. That way it's right in line with where the brakes need to go. My only concern is there's a little bit of play on here. It's hard to tell, but it's just rocking back and forth. Um, as long as we can get it close, I mean, probably only need to weld it up on one side. So pretty close over there on the end of the spindle. So we'll see where it sits. I'm guessing it's gonna be somewhere like this. Well, after hours and hours of dirty work, grinding, painting, torquing, we finally have this thing all done. So I don't have the axle shafts bolted in yet because I'm gonna put some of the gray RTV on there, the high torque one, seal it in, and then I need to do the RTV around here. We're gonna use the black because that's the oil resistance one. I'm gonna wait on even filling it up with oil because we still have a few little things to do like our perches. We've gotta get our perches. I'm gonna order some from Rough Stuff and they are U-bolt eliminator ones. So they just have four bolts that bolt to the top of them. They're pretty cool. And I'm not sure where those are gonna go yet. I could just measure the rear spring width of the Samurai, weld them on there, but then it's the pinion angle and everything. I'm just gonna wait, but this thing's pretty much ready to go. You might not have been able to get the sense for it in the video, but this axle was a hell of a project for me. Uh, I know a lot of you guys out there are rock stars and none of this stuff's big deal for you, but for me, we had a couple big hurdles in this one and I was like this close to just calling it. Definitely couldn't have done it without a couple people. The first is Carl Jantz at Jantz Engineering. If it wasn't for him machining that aluminum ring and giving me the bolts and 
making all that stuff happen for me. Probably would have tossed this and just got another Dana 70. Uh, the other one is my buddy Corbin. He came and had a ton of patience while we were setting these gears is mostly him. After like a million tries, finally got a good pattern on it and we can go. If it wasn't for those two guys, I don't think this would have happened, but it did. And it's kind of crazy to look back on it because we put a Dana 70 HD carrier and gears inside a Dana 70 3 HD where they do not belong and they shouldn't work. But a couple smart guys made it work and I'm super thankful. So thank you guys if you watch this. We're pretty much done with this. The next project is gonna be the Dana 60. That one's probably gonna be a lot too. I'm in the process of stripping it all down right now and it's a lot. There's a lot of rust on there. I have to replace literally every bearing and seal in there and there's a lot of them. Here's a grocery list. Those are all the bearings that are in a Kingpin Dana 60. Brake pads, calipers, new rotors. It's funny, the axle looked like it had been rebuilt. They just left it out in the rain for like 30 years. So I feel like we're in a good spot. We're getting closer, man. I would love to have the Samurai one ton by the time ZukiCon comes around. That's in July. So it's a, only a few months away and I only have a few weekends to work on this. So not sure if it's going to happen, but I'm going to delay tearing the Samurai apart until I'm closer, um, just in case I have to take it to ZukiCon like that, which is going to be fun. But with this would be even more fun. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking it out. If you want to uh, see any of the parts I used, I'll try to put a list down in the, in the description. We had to change out a couple little things, you know, um, the gears, the carrier, uh, the, even the yoke is a 1310 instead of the 1350. We've got the disc brake conversion, all that stuff. So um, I'll put down whatever I can. Thanks for checking out the video. See you guys in the next one.